As Esther already said, I was CEO of Space Hab, and I'll give you a little bit of the background how I got there. Um, I work typically in the turnaround area, and I had been doing a lot of work for hedge funds out of New York, and they had, um, uh, had asked me to go and work with Space Hab. Uh, I think they were worried about their investment, and uh, they were suing NASA. That was the earlier reference to that. And um, as I sat in there for two years on the board, I recognized that there was a lot of value and, and perhaps this wasn't, you know, exactly the right kind of mix of management to do uh, to extract that value. So as I kind of went through the whole thing, I started, you know, working backwards and I'll kind of give you a little bit of my background uh, as a child is that you can imagine that my, uh, my upbringing was unique. <laughs> And uh, uh, my father, who uh, I think is better suited uh, in, in terms of uh, relating uh, to, to adults than he is children, he decided that he would uh, have a common uh, ground of conversation with me, and that was investment. So he started me investing when I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, it, and it wasn't like, you know, he was saying, you know, here, put your money in this. He was saying, here's the Wall Street Journal. You're going to get it every day and I want to discuss that with you and you need to make uh, suggestions as to where you're going to put your money and when I would make suggestions it would be like a due diligence which later I ended up becoming very accustomed to when I was 10 years in New York and uh, I had that at 11 so it was like by the time I got to New York it was kind of a no-brainer. Um, so anyway, I, I will say that I, I, I believe that I have uh, I've, I've mastered the art of due diligence, and uh, while I was on the board at, at Space Hab, I started asking really fundamental questions. And one of them was, is that what have you guys been doing all this time? And that was, well, we've been packing things into our science module, putting it in the back of the space shuttle, sending it up, and bringing it back. And I said, well, what were the science experiments? Well, there's all kinds of them. Well, what happened to them? What, what was it that you saw when they were brought back? We don't know. Well, why wouldn't you know that? Well, because we pack them, we send them up, and we bring them back, and we hand them to the universities that were putting them together. And I said, you never followed through with that. They said, no. I said, well, we, we need to follow through with that. Um, well, maybe there was something there. Uh, what, what was it that you ever saw? Was there a eureka moment? And they would say, uh, well, you know, I think there was some stuff. And I was like, well, okay. So anyway, I started going through and I created a committee on Space Hab that was called the Market Opportunity Committee, which I chaired, and it was funded. And I could pay for studies and things like that and to uh, pay for consultants, and I traveled around and I met a lot of the people that are in this room right now years ago while I was doing that. And um, what I ended up learning was is there was a lot of value. And the problem, though, was is that NASA was not in the mode of if you had an experiment and you were a university professor, and you said, hey, I found a eureka moment. Now we should go manufacture this because it can save lives here on Earth. NASA didn't have funding to do that. They had funding that you, if you wanted to break through the next layer of technological envelope, you could get funding for that. But if you're going to do something in replication over and over again, they didn't have a policy. They didn't have a division or a department that would handle that. And, you, and they were also building out the station as well, all through that period. So it really wasn't ready to do that in their own mind. They were still snapping on nodes and all kinds of stuff. And I'm going to run this movie now and show you. And you guys, this is, this is extraordinary. I mean, in, in my opinion, when you look at it as a piece of real estate that's up there, what I think has happened with the International Space Station, it took so long to build it that we're in this kind of like TV mentality. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. What's new? What's new? Well, this thing took a long time. It's really complex, and it's now completed, and I mean just completed. They, they now have two new nodes, two extra, two final nodes that they have to put on. It's the European uh, Columbus node and then the, uh, the Japanese node that's going on. Um, I think the, the Columbus node is going on at the end of this year, and then the Japanese is going on at the beginning of next year. And, uh, but there is all kinds of room up there. The systems have been stabilized. Uh, they used to get infections, and they had all kinds of problems in terms of air handling and whatnot. Those have all been cleaned up, and now, they're, you know, now they have something that you can actually go use over and over and over again, and they've just created a thing called National Labs that uh, is to do that, is to facil facilitate commercial utilization of the racks that are up there and all the bureaucracy that they're kind of like moving aside that otherwise would impede that. This is really extraordinary, but that's what you have to have in order to manufacture in space is something that operates and looks like that. 